Okay, so today I'm with Corinne, the golfing princess. Hi, Corinne, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm, you know, I'm wonderful, thank you. Getting very excited about the new launch that we've uh, discussed in the past, but less about me, more about you. Let's talk about you. So, Corinne is the golfing princess on YouTube, on Twitter, Facebook, any uh, other I have platforms? A Facebook page and Instagram. And Instagram, of course. <laughs> we've all got to have Instagram now. Um, <laughs> You're doing fantastically well with the YouTube channel. You've got two and a half thousand subscribers on YouTube, so congratulations on that. Okay. Tell us, tell us a bit about your your YouTube channel and the and the you know I suspect the other mediums are to draw traffic to the YouTube channel. Is that correct? Yeah. So the the YouTube channel has been going about just over eighteen months now. Wow. Um, I think the, the thing with the YouTube is I think you need to find a niche and you can't expect to do it straight away. I went into YouTube thinking this is going to be easy. Look at other people doing it. Um, I can change the world and bring <laughs> lots of the women into golf and all this lot. Yeah, that's not reality. No. Uh, it's hard work, uh, but it's enjoyable. That's the main thing. And it's taken us, it took us probably a good 12 months to find a niche um, for the channel to kind of go down. And that is the husband versus wife. Yeah, yeah, I, th uh, I think that works really successfully. I think yeah. when we talked before, you said I said George and Mildred, or you said George and Mildred, and uh, Vera and Jack. I think you Jack said. Jack and didn't Vera, you? I think it's been been mentioned a few times. Yeah. Yeah, for for our American uh, and uh, global viewers, that that uh, Jack and Vera are from Coronation Street. They were a a, a fiery couple, uh, interesting, but hugely entertaining. So um, I don't think we see the fiery side too much. We see the fun aspect of it uh, with your yeah. videos. So. Yeah, we do, yeah. So what sort of form do your videos take? What happens in your videos? What can people expect to see? A lot of it is we do um, course vlogs where we're doing like little challenges with each other, whether it's the actual three hole challenge, chipping, putting, something. There's, 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 it's, it's all about keeping it real. Okay. That's okay. So I'm, I'm just sharing your, your channel go. page. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's about keeping it real. We, we keep the bad shots in, the good shots in, the uh, the really, really terrible shots in. Um, we do try and beep out as much swearing as we can. Because <laughs> uh, golfers' Tourette's is real. Oh, quite absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's just, I mean, nobody wants to see good shot after good shot after good shot. And it gets boring after a while if you keep doing that. So we just... We make it relatable for people to watch and they can see it and say, yeah, I do that on the course. I can hit shots like that. I can go in the trees. And do you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's real life. And, and and it's I, I think you say it's, it's relatable. It's how we all play golf yes. and, and, and we all start in golf. So what, what, what's your handicap at the moment? 27.2. Okay, good. So it's going in the right direction, right? So yeah. Neil plays off? Uh, 31.6. Six, I think, or thirty-one point four. It's it's more than me, anyway. That's all we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that gives you an exact taste of what, what, what of Corinne's videos. So you, you also review products. Um, yeah. What well, I mean, so you've just had a club fit. Let's talk about that quickly. So where did you uh -huh, go? Yes. The, where did you go for that? I went to Torex Golf up in Wigan, okay. which I've been told is is one of the best ones in the UK. So I bit the bullet and went up. And see that here. I made surprise. Yeah, fantastic experience. Okay, and you hope to get your clubs in four or five weeks, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. And, uh, what did you go for? What, you know, what, what did you learn from the fitting? Um, I think I learned that you don't have to be an amazing golfer to get a fitting. I think that's the preconception is, well, there's no point in me getting fitted because I'm a high handicapper and what's it going to do? Uh, I learned that the technology that's around these days, it can make the best of your bad shots. So if you tend to sort of toe it or it comes off the heel a lot. There's, there's, there's clubs out there now that can actually maximise that bad shot. Yeah, yeah. Which can only be a good thing, right? Uh, quite, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, I think it's just changed the, the perception that you don't have to be a scratch golfer to go and get a fitting. If you're high handicap, it, it can help lower your handicap. Well, that's what I'm hoping anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out in about eight weeks' time. <laughs> uh, so what clubs did you go for? I went for the Mizuno Hot Metal 921s. Okay, right, excellent. With, with a recoil senior shaft. Uh, senior shaft? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, well, so I, I don't think senior. I've heard it. Tell me about senior shaft. No, the senior shaft, is, so, the, so the, the ladies' flex is very, very flexible. 
the senior flex is uh, slightly stiffer. Then you get the men's graphite, and then you've got the men's steel, then the extra extra stiff. So it's it's not as stiff as the men's graphite, but it's more stiff than the ladies. Okay. Well, that, that sort of leads on nicely then, and, and something else that we, we sort of briefly covered. So when you um, entered the golf world, okay, um, yeah. were there any stumbling blocks? Were there any issues you found? Is there anything that, if looking back, you'd think, I wish that was easier because that would encourage more girls? Um, I think, certainly when I got my first set of clubs, in hindsight, I felt like I was pigeonholed. Okay. So you're very you're very limited in what's available to you as a female. Okay. I'll do that female because we shouldn't be bought. No, quite. I agree. Um, which and his fittings prove it perfectly because I didn't end up with with ladies shafts, ladies, ladies clubs. Right. And I think it's that it, depending on where you go for your fitting, it's very easy to say, well, uh, come and have a look at our ladies section. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you should be assessing me for how I hit the club, not for my gender. Quite. Um, when it comes to things like golf clothing, there's not a great deal about out there. So there's not a lot to feel comfortable. And if anything that is out there is silly expensive. So certainly the younger teenagers, they haven't got the sort of 40, 50 quid, 60 quid to go and spend on a t-shirt. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. not making it accessible um, for people to want to join that side of it. And, and it, it can quite easily put people off. Yeah, I agree. Very, absolutely. Yeah. Cost is often the barrier to, to yeah. golf. Um, and there's a lot of great initiatives out there. Uh, Brian Cronin, one of our members um, in New Zealand, runs the thing where you can give him your surplus clubs, uh, clubs and he helps give it to people who maybe couldn't afford to. And, and you know, But we shouldn't be having to do that to make golf accessible. Oh. You know, oh. there are no downsides to golf, uh, you know, certainly in, in these COVID times with, you know, being able to social distance, but getting out, getting fresh air, expanding your lungs, um you know so absolutely yeah that that's re that's really interesting and actually it's, it's it's stuff we hear quite a lot um certainly on the apparel market that the apparel market's really restricted um for ladies golf yeah it is and the sort of excuses that i kind of hear is for, certainly from like the pro shops as well not many we, we haven't got a massive lady section so we don't stock it well maybe as if you started stocking more things at a more reasonable price you don't not necessarily just your, your members will come other people will start coming to shop there absolutely yeah and i can agree more. so somebody's got to make that that jump to do it in order mm -hmm. for the ball to roll but because it's like well it's never it, it they're going by what historically happened so it's like oh why change well, that's all right then why change but you find that in golf i mean golf typically as a as a whole market is really reluctant to change um that you know but you sort of need to guide them and direct them but maybe it's because it's because they're not hearing it. They're not hearing the messaging in the right places. Very possibly, Very possibly yeah. And, and I think it's, it's difficult to kind of get that platform to make people stand up and listen. Yeah, it, yeah. it really is. And, and I know that a lot of changed, a lot has just continued to change and moving forward on the LET. Yeah. Um, and they are starting to make pave way into, into a more positive attitude towards getting women into golfing. Mm -hmm. But it's still that the, the age old stigma. It's it, it's it's a men's sport and it's very male dominated. And I, and I think it will be for a long time still. Yeah. But I think the more that we can kind of chip down the barriers and start progressing the, the women's sport forward, it can only help like, later on down the line. Absolutely. And and giving a voice to female golfers, and, and that's what you're successfully doing on your YouTube channel. And as it grows, you know, that, that can only be a, a really positive thing. So um, you've done some stuff with the golf mates. Yep. Uh, tell us how that came about. How do you know the guys? What have you done with them? So that's they, they kind of like um, instigated my YouTube channel, for the want of a better word. So they, they did a, a tour about two years ago and they did, went to a few different golf courses around the UK. And they went to one near us at WAF. And my other half will tell you that I'm quite, I, I quite like the limelight. Shall we say? <laughs> I don't know where he gets this idea from. Um, and he's like, oh, Liam and the golf mates are up at Was on Saturday. I was like, I was like oh my God, really? So I went out to play golf at 7 o'clock in the morning at our club with some guys. And then I went straight up there for 11 o'clock and met them. Right. And it, it was very funny because I walked up to this group, this gathering on the tee box. And I said, oh, was this the golf mates? And he went, and Liam said, yeah. And he looked around, he's like, are you on your own? I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh. His face almost dropped. He was like, oh, my God, we've got... Not that, oh, my God, we've got a woman. He's like, there's only there's a woman on, on her own and there's no other women. 
Oh, we're gonna have to behave ourselves here. Right. And I think I went back, got myself up, and then I think I dropped the f bomb or something, and he just went, "Oh, thank God for that." <laughs> <laughs> so everything kind of relaxed, and you know, it, it were brilliant, lovely, lovely guys, absolutely lovely guys. And I've, I've been on his channel a couple of times. Um, he, but say after I met him there, I that he's the reason why I started the channel. Because I thought this looks easy, right? But do you know what? It, it, it's been fantastic. Um, he he's the one that kind of gave me a shout out last year. Um, obviously we'll come on to that a little bit later but that kind of like gave the channel a bit of a boost um, we went away last year for the Ryder Cup which they're doing again next year which again we'll come on to in a little bit well let, let's um, jump on let's jump on to that now because that's really important because this is hugely successful and, yes. and, and sounds like the best fun um, oh, ex explain the Ryder Cup to us so the, the thing they've been doing it for about three years now um, but last year was the year that first year that I got, got involved with it and essentially you've got, um, there was 80 people that went last year and I was the only female that went. Wow, okay. 80 people. <laughs> like it, was, it, was, it was so much fun. Everyone was very welcoming. You know, it wasn't a case of, oh, there's a girl there. I was yeah. one of the lads for, for the few days. Um, and you've got two teams, red and blues, and you have two days worth of um, match play. And it's either red team wins or blue team wins. And they, they tried to replicate it again this year because the COVID couldn't. So it's happening again January next year. It's all fully booked, and I think there's actually about 160 people going next year. Gosh, wow. And where, where are you playing? We play it at the uh, Amandera in Portugal oh. next year. Oh, very nice. Oh, well, fantastic. So 160 people. So who, who organises that? That I mean, that's a task in itself. It is. So Liam's got, um, he's got dealings with a company called Golf Mates Travel. And okay. a guy called Peter Finch that, oh, that runs it. Oh, Peter Finch. He's, one, he's kind of like, uh, deals with it all. He, he sets it all up and... Blessed him, he was running around like a headless chicken last year. So, but he did a fantastic job. But now it's okay. bigger, bigger again. It's I, I wouldn't like to do that task. Good luck to him. So, how do how do people get involved in that? Um, if if somebody thinks, wow, I, I wouldn't mind being a part of that, can they? Or is it a select um, group? Or it's no, anyone can join. Absolutely anyone. But it's, it is a first come first serve thing because there's limited spaces. Um, th th those that were booked on, I think once you've been on a trip, you kind of get first dibs to go next time. And yep. then the fill spaces up after that. Um, so because we've been, been last year, we've got first dibs to go again this this time. And um, yeah, it's just it's a free for all. If you first come first serve, those those that get the deposits in get a space. Yeah. Oh, well, somebody was upset they didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was a little bit. She's going to grandma's for a week. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh well, that sounds like it's going to be epic fun. Um, and and, and I'm, I'm, I'm vice captain this year as well. I'm told. Oh, are you really? Okay, well, a lot of pressure then. Yeah, we'll be watching. We'll be watching your uh, channel to see see what happens, and uh, hopefully, you'll be posting videos on CFG at that time Definitely. as well. So, let's talk about your ambitions for golf. What 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 do you want to? You know, let's say by the end of by the time you go to Portugal in January, where would you like to be with your handicap? Um, I would like to say that by I would like to finish this season or. Let's be generous and say by Portugal. I'd like to be in the teens. Okay. And are you, have, are you having lessons? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I restarted lessons again a couple of months ago. And obviously with, the, with that, with the new clubs. Mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> <laughs> have you had a ball fitting yet? No. It'd be interesting. Try it. I, 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 I went to an event where, where they did a ball fitting and, and I was blown away by the science of it. Really? Mm-hmm. They fit, yeah. they fit you for golf balls. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Wow. Look it up and uh, look it up and, and, and see, and I'll see if I can uh, send you some contacts uh, of people who do it. But it's re it's a really interesting exercise. That that'd be a good good one to film actually for the channel because I bet not people many people would know about that. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so your so you want to get into your teens um, yeah. for Portugal. Um, what about your channel? What's your ambitions for your channel? Um, is, is there so over over the last eleven months? Um, for those that that don't know, um, Corinne had breast cancer, and uh, for a, for a long period last year, you were going through the treatment and and what have you. So that put a stop to a, a, a lot of stuff. It certainly the golf, but the channel. But you were very very honest in your channel um, yeah. about about this. Can we talk about that a little bit? And yeah. and because I think some whenever you do charity work on your channel, it, it's with with 
around the breast cancer charities, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so talk to us about about the last eleven months. Um, you know, you were diagnosed, and then that must have been a real shock. Yeah, it was. It was a a roller coaster of of, of everything. I think. Um, I went to the doctors and I sort of knew something wasn't right um, and I kind of had my suspicions and people say to you don't think the worst don't think the worst, but you know your own body you know when yeah. something's not right so um, they confirmed they took some biopsies they confirmed it was breast cancer two weeks later I was under the knife having mastectomy so it was very very quick which you know can't thank the NHS enough for that because especially in the middle of a pandemic Absolutely. So like, what's the last thing you want to do let's get cancer yeah quite <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah um, yeah I did get off fairly easy in the sense of I didn't have to have chemotherapy because uh, it was it was very still it was stage two, yeah. but it was found very early, um, so it was very small. It hadn't spread it had gone into one lymph node. Didn't have to have chemo, so I had radiation therapy, and the rest is just been getting back to full strength. Um, yeah, getting back to normal life really. And it's, it sort of leads on to a really important point. And I, I know um, lots of golf charities support cancer charities. So you have Prostate Cancer UK. Um, but but with the breast cancer, you and I were talking about this earlier. That that it's not something that's typically typically associated with men either. Um, and I think you, I'll let you explain when you were going for your treatment what what you saw and what opened your eyes. Yeah, there was two two occasions when we were in the waiting room waiting to go through to see the consultant, and there was two gentlemen in there, and they were in there for their own treatments, not waiting for the wives. And it was it was strange because there was one of the guys, he must have been late twenties, very slim. Yeah. So you know, it's not like he it didn't look like he had any overweight, you know, issues being overweight that could have con, you know contributed yeah. to it or anything like that. He looked just like a normal, normal person, and you think. This is this is a real thing for men as well, and um, yeah. because you don't hear it, you don't see it. Yeah, you don't. You just you just assume a men's cancer is the prostate, a women's cancer is the breast cancer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's it's just that realization. Do you know what men can get breast cancer too? So men need to check as well. So so I think one of the tips there is is getting to know and understanding your body. You you know you summed it up nicely when you said you know better than anyone what changes and what what differences there are and and you're in the shower anyway um and and you're washing so it's worth just you know pressing and feeling for odd lumps and you're checking around and, and the same is testi testicular cancer for men you know I, th I think our sort of message is get to know your balls and boobs do you know what I mean? because yeah. because it's imperative you know it's, it can Absolutely, be life-saving yeah. to catch it early enough so where are you with your treatment right now so I'm having uh, injections every month for I'll be having them for the next two to five years. And that basically puts me into menopause because the, the cancer was estrogen receptive. So they've got to basically stop my body from producing estrogen. So menopause. Here we go. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> poor Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I, I was waiting for you to say it. it was it was on the tip of my tongue. and I was, uh, <laughs> I was being too, too PC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's not doing bad to be fair. He's, he's not getting much of a, a, a rough ride at the minute, but we're still yeah. early days. So the, no estrogen production and some tablets for 10 years to block anything that is produced. So okay. there's still ongoing um, treatment in that sense, but the actual physical treatment is over. Um, I, am ha I am going back for surgery in the next couple of months to get the other side removed as well. Okay. Um, one for symmetry, just so, so that I'm balanced. I mean, yeah. some people might argue that I'm imbalanced anyway <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and it's it, obviously there's there's it much reduce the risk of it coming back into the side if there's little or no breast tissue there then it reduces the risk back, yeah you, you're gonna see it feel it quicker okay right okay uh, so so would you uh, are you regarded as cancer free at the moment yes you are okay well perfect that's that's really good to hear um yeah. And uh, yeah, well, well done on 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 the journey. I mean, I don't know if you say well done. I don't know what the right <laughs> thing to say is, but but you know, it's 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 one of those things. And, and and I don't think we can we can say the message loud enough and clear enough. Check yourself. Don't be embarrassed to touch yourself, and you know, feel around. If something feels strange, get it checked out. That, that's the thing. Get it checked. Don't hide away thinking it'll go away because it won't. No, the quite. longer you leave it, the worse it'll get, and the more invasive treatment you're going to get. Catch it early. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, well, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you did. I'm glad you're on the proper road to recovery. I, I know it's a ball ache having to take medication for ten years, but it means means you've got ten years that you might not have had. Exactly, it's better than the alternative. 
Absolutely. So <laughs> let's talk about CFG very quickly because we introduced you to CFG not so long back. Um, I gave you a bit of a guided tour of the new platform. Um, and it's something that we hope that you'll you'll want to use as part of your mix within your uh, social yes. media mix. Um, what were your thoughts on, on on what you saw? Be as honest as you like. Like I said to you before, I, 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 I'm very. It's very hard to offend me, unless you mention my teeth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> go on, have one go. Most people do. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about that very quickly. Now I was in a pub um, when they first opened about two weeks ago. And this lady put her hand on the back of my chair and I looked up and I smiled at her and she went, wow, have you had your teeth whitened? And then she just fell over. And I was like, all right, maybe I need to calm it down a bit. <laughs> you literally bowled her over with your teeth. Absolutely, I blinded her. So you can imagine all my friends there just going, <laughs> target number one. <laughs> so, Brilliant. So, uh, yeah, what were your thoughts on Clubface Golf? Do you like the idea of the concept of a social network, which is specifically about golf? I do, yeah, I really do. I think there's, I think the the industry out there is lacking something like this. Mm. Um, people have tried it, and people have dabbed the, you know, dipped the toe in the water and tried different versions of it. Mm -hmm. And when it has worked, it's worked really well. But it's it's then, then been dropped for whatever reason. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think with most people who have tried it in the past, typically they're a product owner, an apparel owner, uh, or, or they own something that they're trying to sell, and. Yeah when you bolt on a communication platform to that the people ultimately realize that the reason you have the communication platform is to sell a product with yeah. us we have no product to sell whatsoever we are just a platform we're happy for people to come and sell their products we're happy for people to come and talk about whatever they want as long as it's to do with golf and we remove any form of of cancel culture we know what's yeah. what's happening on generic social networks we know that people are getting bullied and you know that there is racism and there's, it's become so political all of that has no place where we are we're here to talk about golf absolutely it's what's it's, it's the one common denominator that, we, that we've all got in, you know absolutely to talk about and we want to play golf with each other and one it, it, i think that's for me, that's probably the focal point of the of the of the new website mm. is the fact that you can get the games. Yeah, yeah. send a play it, request, um, yes. find open yeah. competitions. Yeah, absolutely. That for me is probably the most important part of it. Yeah, that's and what people want. Yeah, I, I think so. How many times do you go on Facebook or or one of the other platforms and you see somebody saying playing at such and such club tomorrow? Does anyone want to join me? Yeah. Well, you're much more likely to find that on Clubface Golf, you know. So, yeah, I mean, we, we look forward to you. I know you've signed up to the site as it sits at the moment. We know that the site as it sits at the moment is a bit of a an experience. It, it can be a bit slow and cumbersome. Uh, but the new one, I can guarantee you, all of that, those issues are gone. It looks so much better. It's so much slicker. It does look slicker. I must say, it looks more. It does look more professional. Thank you very. Yeah, I, I mean that that was one of the things. I, th I think what we sort of did in the first instance when we launched the site, it was almost as a beta site to see whether the concept had any legs. The yeah. user numbers went through the roof, and we were like, "Oh gosh, it has legs. We have to do this properly now. We have to be a bit more grown up about it." Yeah. Um, and I think that's where we're getting to. So let's talk about be between now and Portugal. What what are your plans? Do you have any plans for any big videos? I mean, obviously, when the new clubs come out, that's going to be a big video. The first round with those. Yeah, watch me duff it off the tee. <laughs> well, you, you already know it's going to happen, so let's let's just park that and accept it, right? In fact, Clubface Golf are giving you a mulligan for your first shot. Thanks. Thank there you. you. Go. Needed. <laughs> <laughs> Needed, accepted, taken without even taking a breath. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's obviously oh, yeah. going to be a, a big video. It is, yeah. So between now and uh, January, we've got uh, we've got a charity golf day on the first of August, which we've got about. Between 70 and 80 golfers coming uh, to Doncaster, which we're raising money for Copperfield. So there'll be a couple of vlogs coming out there um, of, of all the different groups and all the different people who've got together. And, you know, it's a little mini community kind of like just having a laugh together and, you know, get some prizes and, yeah. and all that jazz. Um, so that'll probably, probably have a, bit, a few legs on that one, I would imagine. And if, there's, if, there's, there's a few YouTubers coming as well, so they'll probably take a spin off, off it as well. Okay, so if, if people want to uh, maybe donate prizes or, or what have you, uh, what's the best way to get hold of you? Probably the best way is um, on either on Facebook, uh, the Golfing Princess page on Facebook, or if you go to the YouTube channel, there's a, there's a there's on the About page, there is an email address on there. 
Okay, YouTube. Um, let's have a look. Let's get that up now to make it easier for people. Yep. Uh, Scroll down. It should be down there. View email address. Not a robot. Robot don't have teeth like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, cbgolfingprincess at gmail.com. Yeah. Um, now, you're also on uh, Clubface Golf and uh, Corin, uh, Corin Banks, uh, Banks, sorry, B-I-N-K-S. Um, so, or if you want to message me and I can pass a message on, so Facebook, The Golfing Princess, uh, cbgolfingprincess at gmail.com or Corin Binks, follow her on Clubface Golf and or follow, or I think everyone follows me automatically. Um, so send me a message and I'll pass on the details to Corin. Yep. So, uh, so you've got the charity day. You've got your new cl clubs coming. Yep, um, we've got a. We're going to somebody else's charity golf day in, in September, so there'll be some filming coming out there as well. Um, I've also got. I've just I've recently met. You may, if you're into football, you may know this person. He's a man. He's called Mark Crossley. Okay, I know the name. Um, he's a, he was used to be a goalkeeper for Nottingham Forest. Okay, great. Right. Right. No, I probably don't know. Uh, he came to a, um, uh, we had a, like, a few, few friends got together a couple of days ago at WAF and he's friends with one of the guy that organised it. So I was talking to him and he's got a mental health charity. So I'm going to do some work with him um, in the next couple of months, do some blogs and sort of boost his um, walking and talking charity. Oh, fantastic. So yeah, we'll do a bit of, a few collaborations with other people like that, you know, just kind of like, it's always, I suppose it is like the sharing is caring thing. If we can kind of get awareness of every few different issues that affect quite a lot of people then it can only be a good thing absolutely and mental health is obviously going to be a huge thing in the yeah. next 12 to 18 months as we come out of lockdown yeah. and and what have you so um all right well that sounds fantastic so we'll certainly be supporting that so listen everyone uh, make sure you are following corinne on all of her channels uh, make sure you follow her on clubface golf primarily Obviously, I'm, I'm doing that for my purpose as much as anything, but we'll be working with Corinne to, to boost her channel once we get up and running. Um, but listen, I'm, I'm delighted that you're coming out at the other end of um, your cancer. That's really, you know, that, that's really great news. Your content's fantastic. I, I just love the, like, like you say, it's the relatableness to it yeah. that I think gets it. Yeah. So, oh, you also do a coffee morning every morning. I do, yeah. Every morning, well, most mornings, um, we sort of started it as lockdown hit. And it was just a, because I was working from home on my own, it was a bit of a channel of how can I speak to people? Yeah. Get a bit of interaction with people to, to kind of like break the day up a little bit, really. So we had this idea of starting these coffee mornings up and they've, and they've just kind of like carried on. A lot of people do rely on now in their day just to break their day up as well. So it's it's just nice for people to come along, say hello. And yeah. I know Wendy in the Off office load. is Wendy in the office is a big fan of it. So um, she takes an, <laughs> an hour and a half off every morning to join you. So thanks for that, Corinne. <laughs> she, <doesn't> really, <laughs> she, she always has it on in the background. So um, listen, everyone, make sure it make sure you're following. Make sure join the coffee mornings because they are great fun. Um, they they sort of take tangents and they go in all different directions. It's just an open forum um, yeah. to talk about anything golf or anything life really. I think on the channel, but yeah. it always leads back to golf. So, Corinne, listen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank you. Um, and we'll catch up soon. What, you know, once we launch the new CFG, we'll, we'll catch up again and reflect. And, and uh, yeah, let, let's, you know, when you do the mental health stuff, that's a really important charity to me. Um, uh, or they are important charities to me. So I'd like to work with you guys with that as well, because yeah. it's such a huge message and an important message. But remember, Copperfield, touch your breasts, touch your balls, make sure you're checking. It couldn't be more important. Absolutely. So, Corinne, are you endorsing any products at the moment? Uh, yes, so I'm an influencer ambassador for Players Fuel, which is CBD oil. They've also got gummy bears. They've got um, energy drinks coming up as well, if they're not out already. They've got to do T-shirts, hats, masks, and it's all really good quality as well. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll add a link um, to Players Fuel. Uh, we'll add your link to Players Fuel. Um, so go check it out, people. You know, it's one of the ways we can support up and coming social media influencers is by supporting the products that help them. It's sort of like a big circle. So um, if you're looking for CBD products, make sure you go and check it out. And I can also give you a 10% discount code as well, which you can give to everyone. Corinne, thank you so much. And let's speak soon. Thank you.